Eric Hansen has covered Notre Dame since the mid-90s, 1997, and uh, he covers Notre Dame football for the South Bend Tribune. Where's this rank on shocking days at Notre Dame and Notre Dame history there, Eric? Shocking days of my career. I've been doing this since 1983, and that was number one. I mean, I just didn't see it coming, and I'm still kind of shaking my head. Brian Kelly just finished building a new house near campus and um oh boy it was uh it's just you know and as much as he's his whole identity has been tied into Notre Dame winning a national championship and him fighting to put Notre Dame to, in a position to make that a reality uh, and ruffling some feathers along the way it's just an interesting left turn for me from my perspective how would you sum up the last 24 hours? And do you think all of this happened in a 24 hour period? I, I do. I, I, th I think that Brian was, uh, you know, was always willing to listen to people, but I don't think he thought, saw himself as walking away from Notre Dame. And, um, you know, I think it just all kind of came together. I mean, his own assistant coaches didn't know. Yeah, I know. And, and, and so, uh, you know, Jack Swarbrick mentioned that, you know, he had conversations with Brian last night. That's when they first talked about it. So, um, you know, it, it, the, the thing about it is Brian did leave the program in a good place. And whoever walks in the door next, is going to have a much easier job than Brian did walking in the door in December of uh, 2009. Why did he leave? You know, I was talking to a friend of his just before we got on the air here. And, you know, I think the money had something to do with it, but I just think, you know, maybe a different challenge. Maybe he just got tired of trying to fight the same fights and uh, um, just thought, well, let's let's try to do this somewhere else. It, it surprises, again, we're, we're still kind of walking through the shock of his own friends, of his own inner circle, that this happened. And so it just, I wish I had a better answer for you, Dan. Um, well, you but, sound like somebody who is shocked. I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm shaking my head at 60 years old, you know, two to go. And, and Brian's a young 60, he takes care of himself. He does yoga. He, he has a lot of balance in his life. I mean, you know, he was the oldest coach to ever coach at Notre Dame. He's the first one to be 60 years old to be on that sideline. So he's doing something right. But, you know, his whole identity was tied in recruiting and everything else was tied into his belief when nobody else was believing him that Notre Dame could win a national championship. And, and all the battles that he had to fight for the jumbotron and facilities and artificial turf that just made the traditionalists mad, you know, that was all who Brian Kelly was. And that's why, you know, right last night I wrote, he kind of broke the promise to himself that he could do this, that he could pull it off. All right, so the short list of candidates to replace him? You know, the two that are the most intriguing to me is Luke Fickle, who's the head coach at Cincinnati and who has no interest in being distracted from what they're trying to do this weekend with Houston. So I would be shocked if any there was any movement this week with him. And then I think Marcus Freeman's intriguing. I think it's a risk only from the standpoint that non-head coaches, non-head college coaches haven't done well in this job. And uh, no matter how talented they seem kind of coming in, and Marcus has only been at Notre Dame for a year. Boy, is he a sharp guy when you talk to him. The impressive. defensive coordinator. The defensive coordinator. He can recruit. Um, he, he handles having six kids pretty well. So he's, he's a good multitasker, but I think he's an intriguing pick. I think it would be a risk. Mm. I think that is the guy that the players are building support for. I'm not sure how much of a voice they'll have in this, 
but that's kind of who they're kind of pushing uh, Notre Dame to look at. And I think he will get a look. I wonder about this, Eric. We're talking to Eric Hansen. He covers Notre Dame football for the South Bend Tribune. Let's say this is, I don't know, eight months ago, a year ago. Urban Myers on the uh, Fox pregame show set, and you have openings, including Jacksonville, but you have Notre Dame as an opening. And Urban famously, when he was leaving Utah, I think did a pit stop at Notre Dame and then didn't like what he heard and then kept going south to Florida. But Urban Meyer on the radar here at all with Notre Dame? I think the circumstances that led him to leave Ohio State would be a tough sell for the Notre Dame trustees as much as they'd love to have him as much as that was kind of always the dream coach. I, I think that would keep Notre Dame from moving on that. Even if there were interested interest from urban on the other side of that. What's a better opening USC, LSU, Notre Dame. I'd throw Oklahoma in there, but Oklahoma, I mean, if you want to, but best job out of those four. I think Notre Dame is a great job. I, I think it's the hardest job of the four. Yeah. Um, you know, Oklahoma, you have Texas sitting there. Cal, USC, you have California recruiting. Louisiana per capita has great talent. And Notre Dame, you know where Notre Dame's biggest draw has been for talent in the last four years? California. And number two is Georgia. It's not Ohio or Indiana or Illinois. I mean, they're going all over the place. And I think that's, and now Brian Kelly's raised the bar on expectations. I think it's the most difficult of those jobs. What would be the best job? I would say probably USC just because they have the tradition, the recruiting and everything all rolled into one. And I think they can stop those California stars from being so transient. I mean, you look at Ohio State, their quarterbacks from California, Alabama, their quarterbacks from California. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? Their quarterbacks from California. What are you going to do the rest of the day, Eric? Uh, oh, I got a lot of writing to do the rest of the day. I'm going to write a column on what the next steps should look like. And uh, then we have the beautiful college football playoff show tonight. Wouldn't that be wild <laughs> if all the tumblers fell and Notre Dame somehow backed into the playoff picture? Well, if if somebody slips up here in these conference title games, if yeah. Alabama loses, Notre Dame may may slip in there. And then who's coaching Notre Dame in the bowl game? Well, they are not going to or they're not going to have an interim coach right now. I think they would appoint one at that point. But again, you're going to have a tug of war with Brian Kelly wanting to pull some people to LSU. Oh, so, I know. I know. Uh, it may be you and me coaching Notre Dame in the bowl game. <laughs> Well, Oklahoma's bringing back Bob Stoops. Can Notre Dame bring back uh, Lou Holtz or Rudy? How about Rudy coaches him? <laughs> uh, then I'm leaving the beat. That, that would be. <laughs> I, I'd rather see somebody from the media coach. <laughs> Eric, uh, thanks for joining us. No, you got a busy day. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on. That's Eric Hansen. He covers Notre Dame, and he covers them for the uh, South Bend Tribune.